Hello. I wanted to talk to you guys today about Touch ID acting erratic. A lot of people have been having some real issues using Touch ID on the iPhone 5S since its release through different software updates and trying different methods people are still having this issue so I wanted to talk about a way that I think we can address it and I was hoping that after you watch my video you would give it a try and make a comment for me in YouTube that way we can find out if this really is a solution I can tell you that it's been very successful for me um, running my solution even more successful than some of the methodical methods that other people are using to enroll fingerprints on the iPhone 5S. Um, this so far has lasted several days for me. Um, that's another reason I need you guys to test it is because you know I, I want to get uh, more data on it. I I'd like to go longer term um, and uh, you know I want to see if this is really a solution but I'm going to need more people to test it to determine that for sure. It's a theory that I've developed based on my background in electronics and computer support uh, and it has to do with static electricity or ESD. The issue is that I believe when people are enrolling in Touch ID that basically they're not getting a good image of their finger with the sensor because of static electricity caused by a multitude of factors. Uh, factors such as dry skin, cold weather, uh, plastic rubber wood cases, plastic screen protectors, even glass screen protectors potentially. All of these things have the potential to cause static electricity issues as you're separating your finger from the surface either your finger or the plastic surface can build up an electrical charge and the issue is that this electrical charge I believe interferes with the touch ID sensor now when I've talked about this in the Apple support forums you know there's been a lot of skeptics and that's completely understandable this is a really hard issue to test um, you know it's it's not something that you can see with your eyes uh, but part of the reason why I believe uh, that static electricity is the issue is because not only my background in electronics, but also because I've had issues with touch screens in the past, and I've also discovered that I tend to carry a charge on my body, um, you know, due to a multitude of factors such as my dry skin um, and, you know, the, the clothes that I wear and things like that. Now, Getting back to the reason why I think this is a problem with static electricity, um, I've done a little bit of testing on this, and um, something that I've recently done, and because I've been so frustrated with my own experience in Touch ID, and I viewed this gentleman, Joe Foe's video, you know, I've talked to him a little bit on the Apple communities, uh, where he's showing you how to very methodically enroll your fingerprint, which... I do endorse. It's a good idea to be very careful about how you're enrolling your fring fingerprint, but I've been frustrated with his video because um, it still hasn't solved my problem. doesn't make it a bad video. All it means is that it's not the whole solution for, for a lot of people such as myself. Um, basically, what I've done as an experiment to um, try and fi figure this issue out is I've done an experiment where I, I wash my hands really clean, you know, and that's an issue that people have reported might cause an issue with Touch ID. Uh, but I've gone ahead and washed my hands really clean, wiped off my phone really carefully, took off the screen protector, took off the case, and because I really wanted to make sure I wasn't damaging my phone through this process you know it's really easy to drop your phone scratch it whatever I bought a metal bumper case basically the metal bumper case is meant to help ground out my fingers as I'm touching the phone now you might say well there's a steel ring with touch ID and you know that should ground you out but here's the deal the steel ring is used to detect your finger when you touch the phone and based on the descriptions that I've heard about the steel ring uh, basically there's an electrical charge going through it and when you're touching it your fingers not necessarily gonna ground out especially since it's such a small steel ring it's much such a small surface and you can carry so much electrical charge on your finger so what I've done is I've gone ahead and like I said cleaned off my phone at this point 
uh, wiped it down, washed my hands, uh, took off the screen protector and you know the uh, leather case that I got from Apple. That's uh, you know a pretty electrically insulated case, and I went ahead and sat down at my kitchen table. I got off the carpet, you know, got off a lot of things that might cause static electricity, and I re-enrolled Touch ID. And I didn't use any special method to re-enroll. I just went ahead and um, went through the process as Apple described um, before I. Uh, actually enrolled each finger on the touch ID. I sort of touched the edge of the metal on the phone you know, to make sure any static was discharged from my fingers. I went ahead and um, like I said enrolled four fingers and I put a metal bumper case on my phone. And the idea behind that is after enrolling my phone every time when I would touch my phone to get into touch ID you know get into my phone using touch ID um, I wanted to make sure that I wasn't you know putting static electricity on the sensor um, and the idea there is you know suppose supposedly with the touch ID there is a mechanism for it to update and improve the accuracy of your stored fingerprint and I wanted to make sure that not only did I get my initial fingerprinting into the phone well, I also wanted to make sure that as I as the software was updating my fingerprint scan that it would uh, improve the quality of my picture instead of decreasing it as many people have described including myself. And so what I did is I walked around with this metal case, this metal bumper case for a few days. Um actually it was is a little over a day that I did it. And um then I decided, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and put on a normal case. I am going to. I went ahead and I bought an EvaTech case. Um, it's a really nice case that I got from the Apple Store. I really like it. And I put it on my phone. And it is a carbon fiber case, uh, which, you know, conducts, electri conducts electricity, but it's covered in a rosin or polymer, um, which doesn't. Um, and also, um, part of the case is rubber. So I, what I wanted to do is I put this case on to test it out. I'm like, well, maybe I, I can get it to fail. Um, if I you know, put a case on, I can get it to fail, and maybe that would be further proof of my theory. Um, I was a little bit surprised, though. I, it's been almost two days now since I put this case on, and I haven't had a failure. And this indicates to me that the issue um, can easily be resolved if in the first 24 hours uh, you get a f good fingerprint on your phone and you um, also get good updates you know you, you basically you you build a good uh, library of information on your fingerprints and at this point um, I'm able to scan any of my four fingers I don't have to do the whole thing where I scan one finger five times or scan um, only one finger um, you know, because people are concerned scanning more than one fingerprint causes corruption. I didn't have to do any of that. I didn't have to do any special steps to enroll my finger, and yet all four of my fingers work almost 100% of the time now. And so, you know, I'm, I was really surprised, like I said, when I put my case on that I didn't have any more problems. Um, but it, it really seems like um, because I went through uh, some critical steps in the first 24 hours of using Touch ID after I set it up that um, that resolved the issue that I've been having. And a little bit of background on the issue that I've been having, um, I was having, I was enrolling in Touch ID and I would have it oftentimes fail within 24 hours or less. Now um, I've gone almost three days, three solid days with very few issues on the Touch ID. So um, in summary, I believe that um, if you can try taking off your screen protector, taking off your case, cleaning up your phone and washing your hands very well before enrolling in Touch ID and making sure to enroll a, a, in it, you know, maybe on the linoleum in your kitchen or, you know, tile, um, you know, of course at your table. You're not sitting on the floor when you're doing this, but if you can enroll in an area that has as little static electricity as possible and then you know if you either carry the phone around 
you know, out, out of a case and out of a screen protector for 24 hours. I'm not responsible for any damage that becomes of your phone because of this, but if you can do that, the phone has a metal case, so that's probably going to help ground out your fingers as you're using it. Another solution would be a metal bumper, such as um, this one that I got um, by Ilago. Uh, sorry about that. Um, it's a metal bumper case. Um, it, it has a little bit of offset from the back and uh, on the front. And so, you know, if you do drop your phone, you're not very likely to damage it uh, because the surfaces of your phone aren't going to touch the ground typically. Uh, but uh, if you can, go through that methodical setup, use your phone bare or use a bumper case for about 24 hours and please respond to my post and, and let me know, does this really work for you? It works for me, but uh, my experiment was not purely scientific. Um, having said that, uh, it, the experiment doesn't have to be purely scientific. All that really matters in the end, it doesn't matter if it's purely scientific, what matters in the end is if it actually works for you. And I can tell you that uh, unequivocally it works for me and it's worked better than any other solution or post that I've ever heard on the topic. So give it a try, leave a post down in the comments for me, and you know, let me know, does this work for you? Um, you could be part of the solution, and you could be more satisfied with your Touch ID if this works. So let me know what you can do. And in the meantime, I'll, I, I would have a couple of resources that I'm going to link for you. I'll pull them up on the screen here real quickly. Um, so that you can get more information on my theory as well as the careful enrollment method as described by Jofo and the Apple support community where we have a lot of anecdotal evidence on the issue um, as well as insight from other users. So here is the information on Jofo's enrollment method. Again, I want to stress I am not knocking Jofo's work. I do think it's it's very clever and it's useful and if it works for you I think that's fantastic. Uh, for those of you that are having more issues though I really recommend trying my method out. It seems a little pie in the sky but you know it's worked very well for me. Others have had limited success. I don't think as many of them have been as meth methodical as I have in doing this. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I only got my theory on the, up on the web anyways a, a few days ago, so I, I don't think a lot of people have had ample opportunity to test it out as it is. Here is my blog post. It's uh, trialsandtribstech.blogspot.com. Uh, I have actually a lot of great technical articles here on, you know, Xbox, iPhones, electronics, um, computer support, uh, I've been working for three years on this blog, and, and it's something that I'm really proud of, and I hope you'll visit. Uh, but here's some information. I actually have two blog posts on Touch ID and some potential solutions for it. Um, what causes it over here, strange causes for Touch ID fingerprint recognition issues. And um, so, um, you know... This is something I'm still testing out. It's still a work in progress, but you may find some really useful insights in here for you on the uh, Touch ID. And there's also some very good backlinks that I've put in my article to give you a better explanation of how Touch ID works in the first place. Lastly, I wanted to show you the Apple forum that I've been visiting. There's a lot of people that are real stressed about this issue. They spend a lot of money on their phones. They really want them to work. And... Uh, this blog is a great resource for you if you're having problems with Touch ID because, uh, like I said, a lot of people have spent a lot of time um, experimenting um, with the issue and trying everything that they can um, to resolve it, and they have a lot of insight about some potential solutions for your issue. With that said, I want to thank you for watching my video. Please visit some of these resources I have shared with you. I'm going to include the links below in the comments. Please also respond in the comments. Um, keep in mind that I've put a lot of work into this and, and I've, I've, while my experiment is not perfect, um, I, you know, I've tried to be as rigorous as I can, um, you know, dealing with the time constraints I have as a father and a husband and, a, and an employee. Um, so please no, don't don't just tear down you know my work that I've done. I've got a lot of time into this, and 
Um, I, I have a lot of education and um, like I said, I'm not saying that it's purely scientific, but if you give it a try, I have a feeling that you're going to have some success and you're going to learn something. And that's all I ask. Give it a try. And if you've given it, given it a try, you know, please, like I said, respond in the comments. I'm trying to I'm trying to contribute to the community and help resolve this issue and your feedback is going to be tremendously helpful in doing that. I hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye.